Hi guys, welcome back to Dr. Donovan, Medicine Made Easy. In today's short video, we're just going to be going over clinical signs of base of skull fracture. But first of all, to orientate ourselves, we're just going to discuss the basic anatomy of the base of the skull. And so based on the location, skull base fractures can be divided into those affecting the anterior, middle or posterior fossas. And as you can see in this clinical diagram here, the anterior fossa is the area highlighted in purple, the middle fossa is the one highlighted in blue, and the posterior fossa is the one highlighted in green. So first of all let's discuss signs that are associated with anterior fossa base of skull fractures. Well, the first classical sign are raccoon eyes and you can see in this photo here this lady has what look like raccoon eyes. This is essentially where blood is tracking around the soft tissue of the eyes and it's setting at the back and essentially she's got bruising around both eyes known as raccoon eyes and again in this clinical illustration you can see the raccoon eyes. Additionally, the fractures can cause CSF to leak out through the ears or the nose. CSF essentially refers to the cerebrospinal fluid. So if it leaks out through the ears, it's known as otorrhea, or through the nose, it's known as rhinorrhea. Now, you can see something called a halo sign, and a halo sign appears when the CSF mixes with blood on an absorbent surface, such as paper or bed sheets, and it creates a double ring pattern. So essentially here you've got the blood, and around it here you've got the CSF, which is causing this double ring pattern or halo effect that we've just discussed. Other signs of anterior skull base fracture can include a partial or total loss of vision or smell, as well as eye movement defects due to cranial nerve damage. So it's important to ask patients about these symptoms, as well as to do a thorough cranial nerve examination. Now, if we move on to the middle skull base, so the area highlighted in blue here. Now, middle skull base fractures are the most common type, and they mainly affect the temporal bone and the inner ear. They're associated with damage to the carotid artery as well as with hearing loss or loss of balance. And these types of fractures can lead to blood which pools behind the eardrum causing it to appear purple. And this is known as a hemotympanum. So you can see here behind the eardrum you've got an area of blood that's pooling. Normally you should see the light reflex which you can see here but this area would be much paler. And you should just look at common signs from otoscopic findings to see what a normal eardrum looks like if you're not familiar with that already. So additionally, you can, can get bruising behind the ear. So this is the pinna here, and behind the ear where the mastoid process is, this person has got bruising. Now this is known as battle's sign, and you can see that which is typically associated with a middle skull base fracture. Finally, let's just move on and discuss the green area, so posterior fossa skull base fractures. Now these are associated with cervical spine injury, vertebral injury, or vertebral artery injury, and damage to the lower cranial nerves. These fractures are less common than the other two, but they do carry a risk of damaging the brainstem, which could be fatal. I hope you found this short video useful and informative, as well as helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments box below. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel for new medical education content, which I release every Wednesday and every Sunday. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, bye.